Draft League season is back, baby, and this time the PPL is going bigger than ever. No, literally bigger than ever, as we have 20 coaches participating in this season. With this many coaches drafting from a single draft pool and considering we were picked 19 out of 20, I knew going into the draft, roll compression was going to be a very big thing. What is roll compression, you might ask, and why is it so important? Well, roll compression in Pokemon Draft League refers to the concept of drafting a Pokemon that can fulfill multiple roles on a team, thus reducing the need to draft multiple Pokemon for these individual roles. This strategy is particularly valuable in Draft Leagues where the draft pool is limited, making it crucial to maximize the versatility and utility of each Pokemon you pick. This was going to be our main focus going into the draft, so let's See how the draft turned out. Before we do that, if you are new around here and enjoy the content, please consider subscribing to the channel and leave a like on the video. It takes only a second to do and it massively helps me out. Just for some additional context before we get into it, this season the PPL is experimenting with some new rules to avoid insanely broken drafts from happening. To avoid situations like last season where one team had Greninja, Zamazenta, and Deoxys Speed, and another team had Rillaboom, Sneasler, Chiyu, and a bunch of other threats. It is a mixture of points and tiers, meaning you have to draft Pokemon from a certain tier, but those Pokemon have different values within the tier. The fan doc is linked in the description so you guys can check that out and see exactly how the draft board looks. Essentially, each coach could only draft one S tier Pokemon, which is the best Pokemon of them all. Worth noting, we banned a lot of the borderline broken Pokemon like Dragapult, Spectre, Zamazenta, just to name a few. After that, each coach could only take one A tier Pokemon, which are still incredibly good Pokemon, but are not those super S tier good Pokemon. We could then pick up two B tier Pokemon, unlimited C tier Pokemon, a minimum of two D tier Pokemon, and a maximum of two E tier Pokemon. These rules are mainly there to avoid people from going super top heavy with their drafts, which I know some people like to do, but personally, I find that extremely boring. Each Pokemon was then assigned an individual Terra value and Katerra into one, two, three, or four types depending on its viability as a Terra Captain. I will say, this isn't by any means my favorite ruling as I felt a bit restricted when drafting, but I am always down to experiment with new things and if it turns out that the format is no good, we just won't do it again. At the end of the day, we do this for a bit of fun and being forced to adapt and do things out of your comfort zone can be a pretty fun experience. Being 19 out of 20, I knew that I was never going to get a top tier Pokemon like Great Tusk, Deoxys Speed, or Garchomp, although Garchomp almost made it to me. With that in mind, and considering I want to have Pokemon that can fulfill multiple roles, our first pick was Meowskarada. Meowskarada is an incredibly good Pokemon, and in my opinion, it is good enough to be the best Pokemon on your team. It is incredibly fast and can hit very hard due to Protean. It can function as a lead hazard setter with Focus Sash. It can control speed by being fast and running a Choice Scarf, and it can even run special if needed. It has Sucker Punch for priority, and despite Grass not being the best type offensively, Flower Trick is still a very good move. Not to mention, it got access to Triple Axle now, so the bulky flying or grass types that want to switch in on it aren't safe. As you can see, our first Pokemon is very versatile but competent, so going forward, I'm looking to have it play as a bit of a wildcard Pokemon where it can do anything it needs each week. Our next pick is Roll Compression at its finest, and that is Iron Treads. It gives me two crucial typings in ground and steel type with defensive and offensive capabilities. It's one of the better rapid spinners out there and can even set up hazards of its own with Stealth Rock. Its stat distribution means booster energy can boost attack, defense, or speed, giving that extra edge of versatility. It gets key niche coverage like Ice Spinner, Mega Horn, Body Press, and even Super Cell Slam, meaning it has the tools to do many different things. Our next pick is not as versatile as our previous two picks, but I think it has more versatility than people give it credit for. And that is Keldeo. Keldeo gives me a nice speed tier and a reliable choice scarfer who doesn't mind running it. Pure spec set are also great at wall breaking thanks to its ability to hit on the physical and special side at the same time due to Secret Sword hitting on the physical side despite being a special move. Calm Mind is a Keldeo classic with taunt to stop any phasing. The addition of Vacuum Wave is also nice as priority can be super valuable in Draft League. Round 4, we went back to Roll Compression.jpg and that is Yuxi. Yuxi was the perfect fit to the team thanks to the amount of support and defensive synergy it has with the rest of our members. It's a crucial ground immunity, a fighting resist, and realistically an everything resist as long as it isn't weak to it. Yuxi shines in supporting the team though. With moves such as Thunder Wave, Encore, Dual Screens, Knock Off, U-Turn, etc. it can do a lot for the team. It doesn't hit hard at all so it might be viewed as a bit of a passive Pokemon but it all depends on how it will be played so I just have to make sure it's not staying on the field for too long. 
unless I'm running a Calm Mind Stored Power Draining Kiss set. Round 5 is where I picked up my Fairy type, and if you were around during my P4G run, you know I like fairies with offensive capabilities, so we picked up Comfite. I was looking to get Pheasantipity at one point for roll compression, but I wasn't fully convinced by it. Due to triage, Comfite can become a win condition in the late game, especially with Life Orb and Calm Mind, but it also has U-turn to bait in steel types and drop in Keldeo to pressure offensively. Leech Seed is also a cool niche addition that can punish steel types coming in. Now, although its move pool isn't super deep, I think it has enough tools to be useful, and at this point in the draft, a lot of the fairy types were going. This next pick doesn't fill the roll compression idea we have been going for, but it's a Pokemon that I've been wanting to try for a while, and that will be Sinistra. Our first Terra Captain with Fairy and Steel as the typings it can Terra into. I've seen this Pokemon be incredibly annoying to kill with Terra Fairy, walling Pokemon like Galgen Fired. It does give me another Grass type, so Meow Scrata doesn't need to switch into those ground type attacks, and a Ghost type to spin block, which is always necessary. Strength Sap might be one of the best moves in the game, and Calm Mind sets can be dangerous in the right matchups. Up until now, the draft has gone pretty swimmingly. I've gotten the things I want, and I'm pretty happy with this, but this is where I had to start making some tough decisions about the squad. Our next pick was going to be one of the two Quillfish. I just needed to decide which one I wanted. I ended up going with the Hisuian Quillfish, mainly because I didn't want Meowskarata to be my Ghost Resist. That would not work well with the plan of freeing it to do anything it wants. A bulky water type would be nice with Keldeo, but Hisuian Quillfish is very bulky, has very useful abilities, and is a great spike stacker, freeing up Meowskarata from that duty as well. The only downside to Hisuian Quillfish is it doesn't get flip turned, but I think it synergizes relatively well with the rest of the team. Continuing our roll compression theme and investing in versatility, we picked up Rotom Heat. Since Quillfish doesn't resist Fairy, our only Fairy resist was going to be Iron Treads, and I didn't want to have to force Iron Treads to do that most weeks. Rotom Heat is also a very underrated wall breaker, as Electric plus Fire type attacks hit a lot of teams super well. Bulky ground types don't usually want to catch a Will-O-Wisp or even a strong overheat. Rotom also regained Pain Split, which is awesome for its longevity, and because of its low HP step, we are able to do good damage to things while healing up. At this point of the draft, I felt I covered the versatility and roll compression quite well, but I was missing a bit of a punch on the physical and special side, so the last two picks were to correct this. We picked up Porygon Z, which is an absolute nuke because of adaptability and tri-attack, which has a lot of good secondary effects. It gets nice coverage like Bolt Beam and Dark Pulse to hit Ghost types. It doesn't get coverage for Steel types, but Steel types tend to be more physically bulky, so Specs tri-attack will still chunk them. With screen supports from Uxie and Rotom, we can also run Porygon Z as a setup sweeper with both Nasty Plot and Agility. Porygon is also a normal type, which helps alleviate the pressure of Quillfish having to switch in on Ghost types. For the price we paid for Porygon Z, I think it's incredibly good value for the team. Last but certainly not least is our second Terra Captain, Hariyama, with Fairy, Steel, and Water type as its typings. Hariyama is such an underrated Terra Captain, as due to its giant HP stat, you can really tailor it to take a lot of hits. It also has Drain Punch now, which makes Assault Vest sets incredibly strong. Not to mention Hariyama has very nice coverage, three insane abilities, and some priority to go with it as well. All in all, considering how limiting the rules were and the fact that 20 coaches drafted from the same draft pool, I am very happy with the team I have. I need you guys to let me know what you think of the team down below, and I need you to make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any PPL battles. If you want to see me and OG Albina rank some of the most broken teams in draft league history, make sure you check out this video here. Do it. I'm waiting. Do it. Click it.